Our reading this morning comes from the Sermon on the Mount. A sermon given by Jesus to a great cloud of people close to the Sea of Galilee. There's a group of us here who have been and seen that area by Galilee and actually read this passage or part of this passage at that time. It's a long teaching and it covers many aspects of the life of his disciples or followers. It also includes information as to what they could expect from following him. He did not say it would be easy. He did not say that um, people would accept it. But what he did say, that it was worth it in the long run. In it, he shows them and us that we should not always Sorry, I've lost my pace. In it, he shows them and us that it is not always easy to be a follower of Jesus and that we will not always be thanked by those around us for speaking about him or trying to apply his teachings in the world, both then through the ages and also into the future. The passage we read today is close to the beginning in Matthew's Gospel of the Sermon on the Mount, which goes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, to chapter 7, verse 28. We read just eight verses. And in Church of England Passion, we shall look at three points. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus as the fulfillment of the law. Firstly, salt. Salt has many effects. We use it as a seasoning. I don't know if any of you have forgotten to put salt into the water when boiling potatoes. It gives very bland tasting potatoes that are really quite horrible unless you add some salt to them to give some flavour. Salt is also used as a preservative. We have used it to preserve foods over the ages. Perhaps not today with our refrigerators but it is still an important preservative. Salt is also used as a healing and as an antiseptic, a saline solution, saline solution is often used in medicine for the cleaning of wounds and also given intravenously as a drip to help patients who are dehydrated. Salt also creates thirst. If you have something that is very salty, you become thirsty and have to drink water to reduce its effect. And Jesus says in verse 13 that we are the salt of the earth. To be the salt of the earth, we have to have the same effect as salt does to food or whatever. We have to have an effect on our society and the people around us, just as I've described above. We, as Christians, must have the effect to flavour our society and making God's laws known so that they are always taken into account in the way we deal with issues of today. We need to preserve God's laws within our society so that we are anchored in righteousness. We also need to be the salt of the earth as Christians 
to bring healing to others and to our society. We need to create a thirst for what we have as Christians. Peace, love and joy. People should want the living water of Jesus Christ. People should be saying that there's something about you which creates a thirst in me for what you have. Do we do that as Christians in our society? I asked you, are you influencing our society and those around you? Because if we are not, then there is also a warning in the second half of verse 13. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. We need to be making the good news of Jesus Christ and why he came to this earth known to all about us and in our society if we are not losing our salty effect on society and are no longer useful. We now think about light. In verse 14 of our reading, we are told, you are the light of the world. And that means us as Jesus' disciples. What is light? I don't mean just the physical definition that it is the middle part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible part. It is just a guide. We have lighthouses to warn sailors of danger. It can be seen from far off and it also provides illumination when we are close to it. It helps us to see where we are going and where we have come from. We don't like to be in the dark, do we? Either metaphorically, because somebody has kept us in the dark and not told us what's going on, but literally when we cannot see where we are or what is about us. It makes us fearful. The first highlight is that we do not hide the light, but put it into a prominent place so that it helps others. Jesus described himself as the light of the world in the Gospel of John, chapter 8 and verse 14. The knowledge of Jesus is the light. Therefore, as Christians, we need to shine into the world and show that light. It is our character that shows the light of Jesus as Christians. We may do good works, but it is the reason why we do such works that is important. Our works should glorify the Father and not ourselves. As one commentary I read put it, whenever Jesus did a miracle, people did not ask him to pose for a picture or a selfie or to embark on a speaking tour. They simply glorified the Father. That's what we need to do. If each one of us, our lights shine for God, then the more of us who shine that light the more light is given. Let me illustrate this. Please, can we have the lights off? We now have a lovely sunny day so that there is some <laughs> light, but still. But if I turn the light on there, Yes, you might be able to see it, but it's not very clear. If I lift it up and put it on there, it shows a bit clearer. 
if I lift it up, it shows even more. But that is one light. If we can now turn the lights on slowly, we will add more and more light. Just see the effect of many lights shining. And if we do that in the world, we will be sharing God's wonderful news. If we apply this to our society, the more of us who shine the light of God in the world, the more people will be able to see God and see what they are missing. Much the same effect as the salt in the world. Yes, you may not feel that you are able to do much as an individual, but just as that light shows, when other lights are added to it, we can do a great deal more in the world. We now come to the last paragraph of our reading, starting at verse 40, sorry, starting at verse 17 to 20. The passage is entitled The Fulfillment of the Law. Jesus says himself that he has not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He talks about there being no change to the law, not even the minutest change, until the end of the world. He also says in our translation that unless our righteousness is greater than the Pharisees, then we will not enter the kingdom of God. This statement would have shocked those who heard it because, according to a popular Jewish saying of the time, if only two men made it to heaven, one would be a scribe and one would be a Pharisee. The scribes were scholars who judged, who studied and interpreted the law and commented endlessly upon it. The word Pharisee literally means separated one numbering about 7,000. This company of men kept the minutest detail of the law. We look at the scribes and Pharisees rather humorously today, but not so then. They were the Billy Grahams, the Rick Warrens, the John Stotts, the Bill Hybels, the spiritual giants of their day. And Jesus said that even their righteousness what even good, wasn't even goodness, good enough. What does that say to us? Jesus was confronted by the members of the scribes and Pharisees on many occasions when they tried to trap him into saying the law was wrong or could be interpreted as they wanted, but they did not succeed. Paul says in Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus' message does not change over time. It is as constant as the law of God. The sections that follow our reading that we did not read explain how the law was to be interpreted through a number of examples which we cannot go through now but please take time to read them again and refresh your memory and ask yourself if you meet up to the high standards that God set. It is very difficult. 
So what have we considered today? Firstly, that we are Christ as Christians are the salt of the earth and need to make a difference. Secondly, that we are the light of the world and that we should be helping others to find God. And thirdly, that God's law that we are to live by does not change. It is a constant and it is a very high standard. Let us just pray. Lord, we have read, read your word this morning and listened to my words. We ask that you would teach each one of us what we should be doing as your followers in this town of ours and in this country of ours. Amen.